Catterall and uh, welcome to another Out and About series here and uh, today we're at uh, Cartimer Oval and uh, where the English A team are um, out here for one week and uh, training. Well, we're with a gentleman today who's been or started cricket in well, 24 years ago in 1970 so John Barclay uh, who's the captain of Sussex. Nice to be with you John. Thank you very much. You may be sound rather old now. <laughs> <Is that right? laughs> Yeah, 24 years, long time, isn't it? That is a long time. I mean, I've been very, very fortunate uh, and lucky in, in my career to have the opportunity to play. Mm. And uh, to play for, in fact, about 16 years as a professional. And then continuing the game after that. Mm. What about, how have, you, have you been one of the lucky ones that didn't get much injuries? I was very fortunate until right at the end of my career. I mean, I was forced to retire, really, because of uh, a hand injury. But in the early years, I was very fortunate. And it is a very lucky thing for young players if they can get through those early years relatively injury-free. It certainly makes a lot of difference to these, um, these young lads out here, obviously really striving for, for big things in the future. Mm. Do, you know, just, you, know, I mean, you, you hear as a tour manager uh, this, this particular visit. I mean, how do you see things going for English cricket there? Because obviously it's going through a bit of a... Uh, how can we put it? A, a bit of a lean spell, really, isn't it? Well, I'm always a tremendous optimist. Yeah. And I, I think that uh, from what I see, and I'm not involved in the game full time now, so in a way, standing back from it, one has almost a better opportunity to have a look at it. Uh, I see lots of ability. I really do. I see lots of ability amongst uh, the younger players and indeed the, the sort of senior players as well. And I, I firmly believe that if the, the ability can harness together, if we can make the best the best use of that ability, that we should uh, compete extremely well at the highest level. And, and I always feel optimistic and hope that that moment is going to come. Yeah, I'm a great believer in that. So ability is very important. But I, don't think I, I speak to quite a lot of sportsmen, of course, it's the, it's the mental side. And I don't know, you know, it's the mental side of sport is so important. And at this point in time, I just, not as a cricketer, but I do play. I feel the, the Australians have got mentally a bit more correct than we had. Well, they may have at the moment. I, I can't speak for that. But certainly, um, the, the first and foremost, you've got to be physically fit and ready and prepared to play first-class cricket, and certainly, I believe, at test level. But alongside that, I think that probably more than ever before, people have got to be very mentally fit and mentally alert, toughened to the task uh, in order to succeed. Now, whether or not the English players are or not, I just don't know yet. It'll be fascinating for me to have a look in India to see how these young players, with lots of ability, how they get on and uh, hopefully encourage them as well uh, and, and to see what actually happens. But I think you're right. I think that uh, mental fitness, mental ability to, uh, to tackle the task of the game is, uh, is a very important part of the game. Mm. Now, just a little bit about yourself. You, uh, as you say, you were the captain of Sussex. How long were you captain for? I was captain for six years. Six years. <laughs> well, what sort of memories do you have there? Well, I have very happy memories. I mean, I loved captaining the side. I wasn't, to be honest, a great player. Um, I was a sort of useful batsman, useful bowler, hopefully caught a few captures. Uh, so captaincy and leading the side was the highlight and the main point, really, in my career. Uh, and I enjoyed it. We had a fair measure of success and uh, had some good players uh, who, who came through during that time. Had some ups and downs, like everybody has. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and it sort of prepared me, I think, for... For, for, for everything else. It's been, it's been a great sort of education to me. I think it's an education to anybody to, to lead a side for a, for a period of time. Yes, it is. And I, I mean, we, we regard Atherton then as a good captain. I think, I, I don't know Michael Atherton, mm -hmm. um, but I think he's done extremely well. Of course, the circumstances are very, uh, are really forbidding, aren't they? Very forbidding and very hostile at times, and he has to come through that sort of pressure. And I think he's done extremely well, and I think he will do very, very well in the future. I mean, coupled to that, he's a very fine player. Fine so people player. will look to him as an example, and uh, and I would think that uh, that is what's certainly one of England's cricket's sort of optimistic hopes for the future. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, I mean, Devon Malcolm, I mean, uh, now he's gone out there now, and uh, he's been at chicken pox, for example. I mean, that was a bit of a rough start for him, really, wasn't it? It's a shame, really. Uh, it's unlucky, isn't it? And suddenly, yeah, somebody else is likely to get it. It's a shame when you get things like that happen to you. These things are sent to try you. Don't this you? is why it's a test. Uh, yes, sorry. No, go on. Go on. You know, so it's, it's a great test um, for for the players. I mean, these unforeseen, you know, if you like, ludicrous illnesses, viruses that you could never anticipate. Well, they, they strike, and, and you know, all, all credit to the team and the players. 
that they keep going and stick to it amidst the, uh, the disappointment of losing a, a, a key player. Mm, key player. Um, now, I particularly uh, wanted to talk to you because uh, I, I, the programme we're really making is to try and encourage younger people to play. And yes. you were the founder of the uh, Arundel, Arundel Castle Cricket Foundation. That's right. I was very lucky, of course. The opportunity came just to, uh, when I retired in 1986 to set up uh, this foundation in West Sussex to encourage youngsters, young people from anywhere in the country to play cricket, and particularly some of the young who would not otherwise get the chance to get good coaching and good opportunity and opportunities to play. And so we set up this foundation based at Arundel, the lovely ground there. Mm. We built a magnificent cricket school. And uh, and I think the project, I can say with my hand and my heart, has gone from strength to strength. We've coached, I think, nearly 80,000 children mm. and uh, given them a chance, given them a taste. And I hope, sort of, even though it's just a small drop in the ocean, that that makes a difference. What age group? The youngest are probably about eight or nine, and it goes right up to whatever you consider young, 18, 19, 20 year olds. So anybody, anybody only, uh, that's playing now that's come through your school? Well, Foundation? certainly um, there are players uh, who are now prominent who have played at Arundel, uh, as opposed to be coached, actually coached by us. I suppose the most prominent name, won't be a prominent name to you yet, but it may become one, Maybe. is a young lad called Alex Tudor who has just uh, signed, I think, with Surrey County Cricket Club and uh, is on the England Under-19 tour, I think, to the West Indies this winter. Now, Alex has been down to us on several occasions from a 12-, 13-year-old and, um, and has done extremely well. But others, of course, have played there. Paul Weeks on this tour and Pete Piper and, and then several others have, uh, have been down there and, uh, and, and enjoyed the advantage of playing in a, in a wonderful, yeah, wonderful ground. It's a lovely place at Arundel, isn't it? But I hasten to add, the, 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 the objective of, of the foundation isn't just to, uh, dis, you know, to, to find a fine player or a great player. That's a, that's a bonus. That's an extra that comes out of it. But the real objective is to give as much chance to as many young people as possible and then go from there. Right, right. Uh, you're the tour manager. Now, what is the, what is the, what is the tour manager's role here? Well, now that's a very good question. The, <laughs> I think the tour manager's main role in India, or anywhere, but particularly in India, is to try his best to ensure the smooth running of the trip off the field as much as anything. Uh, Phil Neal, as you know, is the team manager, and he's responsible for the cricket with, with Alan Wells, the captain, and Mark Rambrakesh, the vice captain. And, of course, I'll encourage on that all I can. Uh, but, but my duty is to try, if I can, to smooth the passage which, as you can imagine, in India is, uh, is, is quite a daunting task. But they'll all, they'll all muck in with it all and we'll work as a group together. How many, how many games have you played in India in the 18th? We're playing three five-day matches, mm -hmm. so-called test matches, uh, three four-day matches against uh, uh, zonal sides. I'm not sure they will be zonal sides, actually. They may be more trial matches for their main side. Three one-day internationals and... Uh, and a warm-up match. So that's our Indian uh, leg. And then in Bangladesh, we've got two one-dayers and a three-day match. Mm -hmm. so, it's a, so it's a fairly exacting and varied What's activity. That, a couple of months? It's just over a couple of months, yeah. A mm, couple of months, yeah. So quite a bit of work to be done there then, isn't there? Oh, yeah. It'll be quite hard work. It'll be not short of incident and interest. Mm -hmm. That's for sure, I would mm -hmm. guess. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly the internal air flights. I'm looking forward to them with relish. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't ever been to India once, but... Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a great cricketing country though, isn't it? Oh, wonderful. It's a wonderful place. I mean, I've, I've been lucky enough to go there, not at this sort of level, but it, I, I think of all the places in the world, it could almost be the best place to play cricket. To learn, your style. To, learn to get better mm. at cricket in pretty tricky conditions and, uh, and against very good opposition and crowds that make a bit of a noise at times, which is nice, and uh, pitches that are perhaps new to us a little bit. And conditions that can be just quite daunting. It's a hard place to win, but it's a great place, I think, to learn to become a better player. And that's the objective of this trip. Of this trip. So how have you seen, just to uh, sum up then, how have you seen the, the, the first ever trip abroad for the AT uh, for training? How have you seen that happen this week? I think it's been a tremendous success. I mean, it's been wonderful to get outside in lovely weather, coolish, but not too hot, not too cold, perfect. Everybody having an opportunity to have a bat and a bowl in the middle in real live match conditions as are going on at the moment. Um, I think everybody's benefited from it enormously. You couldn't do the same, you see, indoors, no. back at home. You could try, you do your best, but it's not the same. No, not and so, 
for outdoor, the wind, the, 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 the real, that's the real thing. I mean, you don't play, right. you don't play cricket indoors, do you? Let's be fair. So I think it's good preparation, good training, good practice. Uh, it's not like India, of course. I think everybody knows that. But it's, a, it's, it's doing the best you can to, to come to, to, to the real thing. John Barker, you did the best you could. It's lovely to meet you and, uh, you know, all the very best to you in, the, in India. And uh, who knows, you'll be a term manager for many years to come. And well, that's very kind. <laughs> and very good, luck, very good luck with your foundation. No, thanks very much. Thank you, John. Thanks. Today.